Okay, thanks, Mark. The vacuum end effector uh, is the third in a series that we've done so far. Initially, we started off with the uh, ECBPM and the ECBPI. Then we did the SLG, and now we'll be doing the VEE. So VEE is vacuum end effector, and this is for lightweight applications. We will um, do a, a short introduction of the product. We'll show how to configure it, and then we'll give some uh, examples. And lastly, we'll get around to questions. If you have not downloaded the handouts, please do so. So this is a flexible configuration uh, that has the ability to be able to pick up many different types of items. This example here shows uh, tortilla shells. It can connect directly to the ECBPI, or if used on other robots, it has the ability to have external vacuum and internal vacuum according to whatever the application needs are. There is an online configurator. The configurator allows you to choose the vacuum cups that are going to be installed, in what configuration, and size the unit appropriately. Um, note the fact that this is a lightweight item, and but it can handle accelerations of, you, of holding 10 grams at 100 meters per second squared. It's made of a polyphenol um, sulfone, PPSU, and uh, is uh, excellent to be used in areas where there are cleaning agents, where there, uh, so in any application where there might be direct food contact. You can buy the units uh, in a kit and you can build them yourself, or through the configurator, you can also get a fully completed unit. This is an example of all the items that go into building a VEE. Again, you have a robot flange. There's a variety of robot flanges. You have the connection modules and extensions if necessary, if you're using a camera. And then we have the ability to be able to uh, connect through a quick disconnect mounting, one, two, or four initial modules, and then they expand out from there. You have the ability to be able to add a variety of different vacuum cups and standoffs to be given for stabilization. Technically, let's uh, understand that uh, 60 meters per cubic hour is a maximum you can force through this particular size of tubing. You can get uh, almost a perfect vacuum on it, but there is a blow off resistance level that you cannot exceed three bar. You'll actually push the unit apart. So if putting down a part, you don't want to have it hit and then put the blow off on because you can actually, if there's not sufficient leakage underneath, you can actually uh, disable the unit. It has a very wide temperature range uh, and can handle very cold. Uh, so the use in food applications inside of freezers and stuff, this is a good product that can be utilized. And at ADC, it's not considered to be high temperature, but it is uh, fairly reasonable. Now, we've said before, this is lightweight. So we're, the configurator will tell you that your maximum load can be uh, two kilograms. So with two kilograms, that's dependent upon the size of the gripper itself. So if you're going out to the maximum gripper dimension of 300 by 200 millimeters, that the load characteristic is actually only uh, 1.6 kilograms, and then it goes out to the two kilogram. If you have a load that's greater than two kilograms, then simply work with your uh, applications engineer and your uh, region manager, and we will make sure that the application will work appropriately for you. From a competitive standpoint, VACON has some blocks that you can mount together 
they do not share a common inlet for vacuum, so each one has to be delivered the vacuum uh, individually. It's interesting, but it's a bit clutchy. The automotive industry, uh, led by Norgren and Desteco, and even Schmalz now, we have the metal bar style manifolding and the, that can be done and but this is way too heavy for any type of a collaborative robot robot as is uh, many of the other forms of grippers so when you look at festo smc coval and piab none of them have a product that competes with the vee so if we look, try to configure the product let's understand that before we get there we need to know the measurements of the workpiece, the weight of the workpiece. We uh, have to determine ahead of time what the suction cups we want to use because this configurator does not choose it for us. It allows us to assemble the VEE. So we have to know what the suction cups are, what uh, size and diameter, uh, and whether or not the tool is gonna have one zone or four zones or how that's gonna be. And we have to know where it's going to be uh, hitting the product. So let's go that direction. <clears throat> Simply going to the Schmalz website, make sure at first you have registered and you are logged in when you begin the process of this. You can search for VEE, and it's just that simple. And you'll find some products that come up. You see initially here, the vacuum modules, the basic top modules, some plugs and things, or the starter set. Any one of these will take you to the configurator. But just by rolling down, you can see that the first basic module here the step down from there says go to VEE configurator. Give it a second. It really doesn't take long. But for the, there we go. So with this, the configurator allow, has a picture here that you can move about and look at from different angles, but we'll leave it on this one because it's the easiest one to use for our purposes today. You then have the ability to scroll down. The top part remains constant. You have the ability to scroll down. So let's say that we wanted to use a, um, a unit that is four cups and we have a workpiece which is 100 by 100 you can see that the picture is changing as we go along and i want to use the cups as tight together as possible so i'm going to choose layout 23 so there's layout 23. Now, what are the options with layout 23? There's different cups that you can choose, but I particularly like in this application, in the one that I've got in my head right now, being a small box that is a 100 by 100. That's a good enough cup. Now it gives the option here of 20 millimeter, 25 millimeter, or 30 millimeter cups. I wanna go with 30 millimeter cups. So you can see that it just changed it in the picture also. I do like the use of the eco pump on this, so I'm gonna remain with that. And a standard universal flange would be fine, but the other flanges could be chose based upon the robot we're attaching it to. And then there's nothing else down here in the options that, uh, because I'm not gonna introduce a blow off valve on this application, because in the application that I've got in my head, my box doesn't need a blow off. So if I come up here, it gives you the ability to output CAD models, but it also gives you the ability to do a, um, a PDF data sheet. And then just simply by clicking that, 
you get a sheet that looks like this. The neat thing here is that the, the sheet gives a, a small app or description, tells you when you created it, gives you a picture of it, gives basic dimensional information, and it gives a full list of all of the components that go into it. As a customer of Schmalz, you have the ability just simply to save this sheet, send it to the your region manager or your applications engineer or frontline person and say, quote this for me. And they will quote it for you as individual parts, or you can say, quote this for me, fully assembled. And they'll put a small labor charge on it for doing the assembly. I strongly recommend letting us build it because as uh, having built my own samples, the labor time to put this together is way more than the design time. But if you were going to want to know how much this costs, you can simply, and I, and I say this simply as in uh, a person who is a computer geek, that you can copy this list. You can take that list, put it into Word, create it into this type of a format, and I know this might be a little bit geeky for everybody, but then you go back into the website and you can, through go to direct order, you can load the entire list into the web store and the web store will then accept that list where it's article number, comma, the quantity of items, and it'll actually bring up each one of those items and at the bottom tell you that this particular unit that we just configured is 1,144.43 list as a list of component items. The assembly charge for something like this is going to be uh, around 250 bucks. So you could say that it's $1,300 list price. Again, I'm emphasizing list price. Work with your, <clears throat> with your region manager to know what your discount on this would be. So here's an example where they're uh, from the catalog where we're actually just picking up some boxes of tea. So it gives you that ability to understand that even though it's limited to, uh, to uh, two kilograms, there's a lot of two kilogram applications out there. And when you're dealing with a collaborative robot, there's really a lot of two kg applications out there. This is a special unit that was built because you'll notice as it slows down, the fact that the center portion is an actuator that's firing one cup, and then you've got the two outer portions of the VEE, which are used for the picking of, of the larger boxes and the cases themselves. But, Given its high acceleration loads, the VEE also can be used on Delta robots in food applications and do a lot of work there also. So don't limit yourself to just collaboratives. The VEE is a product that can be used in many, many different applications. So please contact your regional manager the application engineer that works with them or their assigned frontline person for assistance on the VEE product will all be happy to help. And I'll open it up to questions. Okay. Uh, so far, I don't see any hands raised, but there is one written question. Oops, I'm sorry, Gary, I'm having difficulty with the question box here. 
Ah, here it is. It says, can you show how to get the pricing again using the bomb? Yep. <clears throat> All right, so if we go back to the website, <clears throat> if we've created the document, if I copy the list out of the document, that it, the PDF that it creates, and I go into Word, I'll start, and then you paste, you'll see the fact that it brings up everything here. So what I did was I went through and I deleted the everything after piece on each one, and then added a comma between each one of the article numbers and the um, and the the quantity. If I copy this and I go back into the website, I'm starting a new one, so let's go back there. And I go back into the website, go to direct order. Well, first, let me wipe out the one that's here. Since we're doing this, that way it'll be, it'll show you. I'm gonna go down and I'm going to empty my cart. Okay, so now there's a zero, I have nothing in my cart. So I wanna go to direct order. I wanna enter an article list, copy and paste. Just paste as plain text. And you'll see that all it is is article numbers, comma, and then the quantity, and add to shopping cart. Okay, now I have a different number of items in my shopping cart, so. But, so this is, from the list that I just copied over, this would be the uh, list of items. So I must have changed my example somewhat. Yeah, this one's got a different connector on it. So, but anyway, it's the same concept of the uh, copying the list over and then being able to get to the pricing. So if you're registered on the website and you're, uh, you're, you have an account, meaning that if you're working for one of our distributors or you're working for an integrator that has an account with Smalls, then it will actually produce for you the pricing uh, according to the discount level that you receive is the way I understand it. Will can correct me on that if I am wrong. And but if it's if you're like me, you'll just all see just the list price, and then you would have to work with uh, your your region manager or frontline person to establish what that discount level would be. Does that answer that question? I do this a lot, so it's it's second nature to me. Yeah, there's a couple other questions here, Gary. Um, one is, are there check valves built into these in the event that one of the cups isn't secured to the workpiece? There are not. The two, that's a, a good question. There's two basic limitations that the VEE has uh, similar to the SLG is the fact that uh, well the you can you can put check valves in between the vacuum cup and the module but there's no built-in check valves so check valves can be accommodated it just the ones that we have right now are metal and so they're kind of heavy and so that becomes a limitation when if you had say eight cups on the tool and you use uh, our current check valves they will quickly exceed the load capabilities of it. The other thing is, is that I've had customers come to me and say, hey, I'd really like to work in spring plungers. And that's just something that does not work with this product. You can't do spring plungers either very well. Um, and there's a request that, uh, can you make sure that the link for the configurate is available to attendees? And I believe it's available as soon as you register yourself online. It is. Yes, you have to. Uh, if you try to get 
if you try to get on to, uh, if you go onto our website and you're not a registered user, then the configurator will not show. And then, uh, Greg, Terry, you have a question. Your hand's up, but I can't unmute you. I think there's an audio pin you need to put in. It's 155 if you need it. Or you can type in your question if you'd like. Than that, I don't see any other questions for you there, Gary. Okay. Um, All right. I'm um, Greg. I'll email you here in a second, and I'll try to collect your question via email, and uh, I'll get you an answer for whatever that is. Um, there's another session of this tomorrow. Tomorrow's is going to be covering the FXCB. Uh, it'll be conducted by Steve Blystein, and um, it is at 11 o'clock. If it's not on your calendar, be aware that uh, the these series did not get automatically um, put onto your calendar day over day. It would have only uh, put the automatic marker on your Outlook calendar for the first one. So you might have to put a reminder for yourself for tomorrow, 11 o'clock. And that's it. Gary, you good? I'm good. All righty. Um, here's the information for calling and contacting Gary or myself, Mark. If you have anything that you need as far as literature, please reach out to me if you have questions. I can also help at least direct those to the correct person. I hope you all have a good day and thanks very much for attending. Thank you.